Hey, Marcus Hutzel here. And in this video, we're gonna see if we can create a speaker mount, a floating speaker mount out of a Visa arm and a laptop plate because I have a bit of a spatial problem here in my office. Not a special problem, a spatial problem. It's a good problem to have. Recently, I bought a couple sets of speakers, the Atom T5Es and the Yama HS5s. I was going to A, B them and decide on which pair I wanted to keep and take the other back. I decided to keep both pairs. So I don't want these HS5s on my desk. I wanna get them up out of the way because I want my clean, big, wide desk back. And right now they're just taking up space and they're at risk of getting damaged. But I didn't want to put them on speaker stands that also sit on the desk because that just takes up more desk space. And as you can see, the upper shelf of my desk where these speakers are sitting, that's the end of the shelf. So I have no more shelf to put the speaker on. So that's why I need a mount right there. And you can see the spatial issues. I built this custom set of uh, drawers to go under my shelf, but with the speaker sitting here, I can't even, I can't even pull the drawer out. I have to move the speaker over, pull the drawer out, get something out. So again, another reason to get this up higher. So we need to see if we can mount this sucker on the back of my desk and then safely mount the laptop plate so that it will hold the speaker sturdily, if that's a word, and uh, the speaker won't fall forward. So they do make some desk clamp mount speaker stands that only consist of a pole that clips onto the back, but the speaker has to sit right on top. And for my setup, I think that would put the speaker too far back. It would be much further back than these Atom speakers here. And I don't want that. I want it to be on the same plane. I want it to kind of have this wraparound effect. So we'll take the Visa mount with the arm that will allow me to extend the speaker out beyond the arm a little bit, maybe not a lot, but enough to get it further far forward. So the only other problem is that most of these laptop plates uh, that are made for Visa mounts are really wide. This thing's about 14 inches wide. That's double the width of my Yamaha HS5 speaker. So I need to modify this because even though I can put this up there, I don't want my laptop to have to keep going further out to the side. So if I put this up there, I have to move my laptop stand. I don't want to do that. I use my laptop stand as a second screen and it just, it, you know, I also can't go that way because I've got a couch in my office that I like to relax on sometimes and I don't want to keep pushing my laptop over that way. So got to solve this spatial problem. We're going to try it with this. We need to modify this. Uh, but before we do that, let me show you a little bit about what's going on back there currently with my desk and all my Visa arms. So hang on. All right. So if we look back here currently, we can see that I've got this Visa arm mounted to the back of the desk right here. It comes up. It has two arms attached to it right now. It has one arm that has my laptop stand and my laptop on it. The second arm currently has my camera on it that I use for a webcam, my GH5. That'll have to get moved and the speaker will then hopefully be able to fit right in this area where my camera is. At least that's the idea. But again, we're gonna have to modify this plate and we're not gonna do that in the office, so I'll meet you in the garage. All right, so welcome to my somewhat messy garage where we'll use my workbench as a stand-in for my desk. So there's our plate. We've got our Visa arm. And put it on the onto the workbench and rotates this so you can see it. What we have to be careful of is the fact that most of these visa mounts are meant to swivel in many directions. So we've, we've put the plate on uh, the back of the laptop shelf. And when we slip this on, that part's easy, it gets a nut to hold it in place. But as you can see, these are designed to also tilt forward so you can set your tilt angle. And we do not want this to tilt forward with the weight of the speaker and have the speaker fall off because then I have to buy a new speaker. So yes, you can tighten this up in the back there, but I'm going to have to figure out some way to lock this so it can't tilt forward. I don't want the speaker falling, but I think this is a good proof of concept at the moment. I can get the plate pretty close, but as you can see, the plate is out over front of the pole, so the speaker doesn't have to sit right on top. It can sit out on this plate. I just need the speaker. Hang on. All right, so here's the final idea. This sits there at our preferred angle. I don't have it tightened up quite well enough right now, but it's there, it sits there, and I think I'm happy with that. 
Um, I can angle it in any direction I need to, um, but as you can see, the plate here is quite a bit wider than the speaker. So I, I think the, the weight distribution is fine. I don't have a problem with this arm. I don't have a problem with the pole. I just need to fix this so it can't tilt forward. So we're just going to have to take this and modify it, which means we're gonna have to cut it and we're gonna have to cut it with an angle grinder because that's pretty thick metal. So I am sacrificing the $20 I spent and if this doesn't go well, then I'm out 20 bucks, but I think it's gonna go just fine. Um, cut it, uh, sand the edges with some uh, sandpaper steel wool, file, file it down, maybe give it a little paint job, make it just the width of the speaker. And then I've got a narrower plate and hopefully a decent speaker mount. So let's get to cutting this thing. I figured I'd put on some work clothes that's gonna get a bit messy. So these monitor pads are just under eight inches, so maybe we'll keep the, uh, the plate to eight inches, but I think I'm going to have to take these holes into consideration because these holes will actually help me cut it. It'll be less to cut, but if it's not right on it, I don't want like jagged edges, so. You know. That is seven and five eighths and after measuring the speaker the speaker is actually under seven inches so we're gonna have to go with this because i'm gonna have to go with uh not having a jagged edge i want a nice straight edge new cutting wheel Original size after cutting one, so that's how much uh, material it took off. Good thing I got two wheels. Not bad, I just need to kind of straighten the edge a little bit. I didn't cut quite straight um, and then file it down and it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna change to a grinding wheel instead of a cutting wheel. Never change the wheel with the tool plugged in. Just unplug it. A little bit of steel wool to finish up the edge. All right, so all those edges feel nice and soft to my fingers. I don't feel any sharp edges. Nothing's gonna really cut me. So I think this one's done. Maybe we'll paint the edge, maybe we won't. Let's go install it and see how it fits. All right, so after some final testing, this is what I came up with. Got a U-bolt, but it's this squared off U-bolt. And I took the plate and I drilled two holes in the back and I ran that U-bolt through it. And as you can see, it basically just grabs that bar. So when this is sitting on there, let me actually take the camera off here. So you can see basically that this U-bolt grabs that and there's no way for the front of that to tilt down. The speaker front goes up there and it can't tilt down because if it tries to, this U-bolt just rests right against the bottom and that is not going anywhere. And my speaker, hang on. Slightly higher angle. Speaker. Foam pad on. Will be nice and safe and that's not tilting forward. It's a little crooked right now because we're in the garage, but um, let's go test it on the desk, see how it works. All right, so here's the bottom of our laptop plate. There's the U-bolt coming through the bottom like that. And it's gonna go over the arm here. We'll slide this on like that. And once we lock that on, then we can put the bottom plate the nuts go on the bottom of the U-bolt. 
tighten to taste, and then this cannot tilt forward. All right, so now instead of uh, just a single set of speakers, I've got both of them there side by side and plenty of free space down below. You can see the U-bolt right there, grabbing the plate. It's not gonna tilt forward at all. And my speaker is safe and sound. So that's it. <laughs> I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. It worked out pretty much exactly like I hoped it would. Uh, got the mounts cut down to size, got them floating, got my desk space back, and I'm really actually quite surprised at how little time it took me. Uh, it took me about four or five hours. I did it in two different nights um, out in the garage cutting the metal. But uh, yeah, that's it. It gave me the ability to have two sets of speakers so I can check my mixes on two different brands and models of speakers to make sure everything sounds good. Got my desk space back so I can just you know, put more stuff on the desk now and then have to figure out a way to uh, get rid of it. And for me, this option floating without anything underneath it is just better for my brain and my setup. It's better for me than the mount that clips on the desk where the speaker has to go directly over the pole. Again, that would have put the speakers too far back. This lets me have them closer and this option just works better for my setup. And you can see here on the right that we were able to get the HS5 exactly in the slot that I wanted it to be in. It just takes up only the width pretty much of the speaker. My laptop is not too far off to the right. My GH5, which serves as my webcam, is not too far off to the right. And I'm very happy with how that fit in there. So if you're starting from scratch, you'll need two of the Visa mounts that mount to the desk that have the pole and the arm. Those were about 25 to 30 bucks a piece. You'll need two of the laptop plates. Those were $20 a piece. If you wanna cut them, you'll have to have something to cut them with. An angle grinder is like 80 to 100 bucks. Um, and you'll need a couple of, of U-bolts. So you could get away with this project for, let's see, two mounts, that's 30 times two, that's 60. Mm, about 100 bucks just for the Visa options. And then you have to get them cut. Of course, you could leave the plate its full width and just potentially put a bigger speaker up on there, but be careful, make sure you're under the weight limit of um, all the components. But we're good. I've got my wraparound effect, so I can just edit more videos and audio and um, keep cluttering up my space with more fun toys. So the next time someone asks if you can mount a speaker on a Visa arm, tell them yes, and show them this video. Anyway, till next time, later.